Hi guys, hello, well, um, a short video really to talk through a build on some of the micro droids. After a rather rubbish year of 2020 with uh, not being able to get out to cons etc, what we have been doing is lots and lots of very busy work around 3D designing and printing which is cool. And one of the very popular ones of uh, 2020 uh, from our group has been the little my, these little baby astromechs. Um, we've um, done a good, good range of them and as I think we've probably seen lots and lots of pictures of these things. What I'm going to do is a quick video today that just shows you how we put all of these together. Um, I designed these originally for people who just wanted to guess build, um, start off small, avoid, in, in, involve family and children in, in building and, and really just to start off and get your head around some of the basics. Really simple electronics, we've got a We've got a very simple battery, uh, 5 volts or 6 volt battery, um, an RC receiver <laughs> and, and transmitter um, and pretty much apart from servos that's it for the electronics. So they, they are, as I said, they're really really simple. I'll just show you how they, how they go together. So effectively, let me just grab one of these that's uh, we prepared already and I'll just take you through how they build and then I'll assemble it. So the, the basic the basic model is is this. Uh, you've got you've got two servo drives at the bottom, you've got a tiny 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 caster at the front, um, there's a gear on top to do the dome spin and then you have the dome which fits on top kind of like like that. And that's really it. And then in the body cavity, we have lots of space to put in the um, batteries and uh, the controllers. So, what we'll do is I'll show you how we build one. So the first part, I guess, is the body. The body is a single print. It prints this way up on the bed, no support um, as, as usual. And then within the body, you've got a couple of things to assemble. There's some tiny seven millimeter uh, or by three millimeter bearing, so the three millimeters in the middle and, and, and seven millimeters on the outside. Again, these are all in the instructions. But there's three of those that kind of stack on top of each other, and they literally just push into that hole, which is part of the print. Then, secondly, there's a there's a bracket, which which is this kind of bracket here, that bolts in on the inside once you've fitted the servo. So the servo drops into. Um, I'll just show you where the servo fits, just grab this servo out of the bag. It, the servo drops into the bracket and then the bracket is held in place just with, with four screws. So the servo literally, the cable goes through the middle of it um, and then it drops itself into, into there, kind of like that. And then um, what, you, what you end up with is, is the servo sat inside the bracket. So once you attach the servo, leave the, um, the actual cable loose. Uh, four M3 screws. These are self-tapping screws. So uh, I've started to make the holes 2.8 mil wide, which means that three mil screws tap into these things and hold them really solid. And then in the end, at the top of that, you've just got a little gear uh, where the servo horn glues into it, and that little gear just screws in on top like that. Really simple. And that's pretty much your body completed. Next thing to talk about is probably the legs. So in true Blue Peter fashion, we've got a couple that we prepared earlier. The legs are very, very simple prints and there's the two parts, I'll just grab the other part. So the, the prints are a single print for the leg which prints in this up like that, again no supports. And uh, the other side of the leg which is the battery boxes. So the, the battery boxes, if I get the right one, the battery boxes fit over there like that. Now you can glue those together or you can use um, or you, well you can use little pins, picks, not little pick, picks, little pegs of filament to hold them together. And again really simple so that you print the leg out. There is again a servo bracket so the the servo fits into that bracket. Which I'll just kind of show you how that goes. So it literally just fits in like that and two screws. And then this bracket just slots in, and a, similar to what we did last time really, a couple of three mil uh, bolts and it self taps in there. And so I don't know if you can see, but what you've got is, so there's a bit of paint on this one, but you've got a servo, 
you've got the the wheel which again similar to that gear uh, the wheels the wheels print out like that you have a, a single servo horn in the middle and um, they just bolt onto that servo and that servo drops into the wheel and then you run the cable through there so um, and, and literally these um, can be printed in about probably two days can be assembled in a, in a weekend um, finishing them off I've got to say uh, what I didn't do is just spray the whole things one colour, so whether that's white, um, black, whichever. And then the wondrous magic of acrylic, acrylic paint markers. So what these are, acrylic paint, uh, but in the format of a sort of a magic marker. So you can get some really fine detail without having to mask anything too crazily. So that's how we finish these off. So what you do is you effectively put your little servo in there, um, the battery box is fitted if you can get the right ones for the right legs glue them together same on the other leg and what you end up with is, is two legs with your little wheels underneath now they're ready to fit in now to fit the legs again I say everything's really simple but it is really simple um, I've got some some of these I've started to use these quite a lot actually with 3D printing and they're tiny tiny things what these are is they are 3mm um, by 10mm grub screws or set screws and what they do is if you can see on there they just fit into that top hole to give uh, a little bit of orientation for the legs so they're literally there as a sort of a, a bracket to keep it on place so to fit the first leg again you have to make sure you've got the right side uh, to fit the first leg is you then take your leg with your battery box hopefully glued on I've found actually, to be honest, on some of mine, I haven't bothered even gluing them on because once they're screwed on together, they're okay. Um, the servo cable goes through that hole and which drops into the body. The little peg that you, that you previously put in there for orientation clicks on. Um, at the back of the skirt, there's actually a, um, a small indent. I don't know if you can see it on there. There's a small indent where the battery box actually fits, so you can see where the battery box fits to. And then you take a single M3 uh, bolt and you literally just tighten that bolt up like this. And what all that does is single bolt, self taps into the plastic, tightens up. And with that one bolt, then the whole thing is quite solid. Even though I haven't glued that battery box side of the leg on, it stays on anyway. But as I said, if you're building these, I'd tend to glue them in a little bit more secure um, and then you repeat it on the other side as you would do with any uh, astromech legs so alignment pin take your assembled piece with your battery box feed cable through make sure you get it at the right angle push it in get the battery box into um, that little indent an M3 screw and tighten up all the parts, um, all the bill of materials for these are all on the um, on the instructions. So you know the size of screws and whatnot, um, but the the length of them. So tighten that one up, and there you go. So then, what you've got is you've got assembly of the body and the legs. The next thing we will look at is the little the centre leg. So this consists of a couple of parts, and I'll just take you through what those those parts are. So what you've got is you've got the main shell for the centre leg, which you can see there, um, and you've got a little bit of an ankle. So the ankle obviously fits fits on top um, to create the whole shell like that, um, and then and then you've got this part this part here which actually fits inside. So uh, if you look at this, it's kind of like a little pyramid shape with the end, with the top cut off. It drops into there, and then what happens? is this um, top piece screws on. The reason I did it in three parts, well the reason I did it in all these parts is just to stop uh, supports. So it's, uh, you know, it's all supportless. We don't waste plastic, which we don't want to do because we don't like wasting plastic. Um, and it all prints very, very nicely. So there's only one orientation it can go around to get it completely straight, which is that away. Once you've got it in the right orientation, push it together and then just tighten that screw up and what that does then is it completes the assembly of the centre leg which is again really simple uh, tighten it up, self tapping straight the way through um, until it 
that tightens up. So there we go, we now have the centre leg. Now the centre leg, there's a little indent underneath the, uh, the little micro or the baby droid and the centre leg just pushes into that indent quite solidly. You can glue it, you can leave it, um, or you can put a single screw from the inside into that, it's up to you how you want to attach that. Um, I, in this case, they, they do fit quite nice on friction alone, or you could put some two-part um, two adhesive. Underneath here, we have where we want to assemble um, the little uh, caster. The caster is a really simple assembly. It's, it, it's quite small, um, and it consists of a single wheel in the middle, which is tiny, it's about that big, like that. A single wheel. Um, inside that wheel goes another one of those 7mm by 3mm bearings, so 3mm in the middle, 7mm on the outside. It just pushes in, and then you take a single 3mm uh, by 10mm grub screw, the same ones that we use to align the legs, and you just put the, put the grub screw through, and it self taps into the plastic, which gives you a little wheel on a bearing. Then you take your second bearing here, um, and this whole uh, caster pushes into that second bearing, and then finally, this bearing just pushes into the into the leg, and that creates a tiny, tiny uh, little caster to a fixed leg. And that is pretty much your body complete. As you said, it, it doesn't take long at all. On the inside, what you're left with then is three servo cables, which is uh, a left and a right leg and then a dome cable. So to connect those up you take your receiver, um, you will need an RC unit that has tank mixing um, on it and all you really do is take one channel which is one leg onto channel one, again just check on your pins, signal nearest the label, your second one into channel two and then the dome you can put into channel 3 or channel 4, I always forget which one it is. So it's your left or right stick on the other side that actually spins it around. Um, and that's your RC setup. The only other thing you need to do then is to take your battery, uh, which give, obviously gives you your power, and you plug your battery into one of the power slots, making sure you've got the orientation correct. So, I'll just turn the RC on, not tested this out, so, and there we go. We now have a working little R2 unit um, with all the controls reversed. The reason that all the controls are reversed is I've obviously got left and right legs in the wrong channels, so I'll just switch those around like that. Let's try and see if that works better. There we go, now he's spinning. And then if I do the other side, I think I've probably got his dome spinning around correctly. Um, now, as with all RC, you'll see there's a little bit of a creep on there, so if you want to, you can trim that out. Um, so, the, all, all RC units tend to have a trim, so you can start to trim everything fits together. So that's pretty much it, push the electrics into there, and then you've completed your build. The only other thing you then need is a rather magnificent dome to go on top that you've finished and painted. This one I've done is R5, so what I'm going to do is pop a little dome on top of there. I'll show you the dome just very shortly. Um, and so you can see his dome now spins, and we have a little remote control ASU unit. Very, very, very simple. Um, I'll just quickly cover the domes just to show you how they build inside. Inside the dome we have a ring, we have a gear, and most importantly we have an M3 bolt that goes through and sticks out. It sticks out about 15mm, something like that. You can make it as long as you want, to be honest, because there's a straight hole. That sits inside those three little bearings that we talked about in the middle there, so uh, that literally just drops in. Now there's, there's, there's a couple of different types of domes depending on the one that you're building. So. Um, this one, which is a little uh, R2 one, has got three bolts that hold this ring in. So what, you, what you've got to do is put this centre bolt in first, it just self taps through, and then you have to attach the ring. So in this case, three bolts and it attaches. That's um, similar to, to all of the other ones. Um, see if we can get this one off. There we go. Yeah, so similar as you can see to the R4 dome. Um, 
Now the bigger domes, which is kind of the R5s, the BT1s and those, uh, they, they're a two part print and what you do is you just glue this glue this, this piece to this piece level. Be careful when you glue it to make sure you've got that screw in because there's no way you're getting that screw in other than drilling a hole in the top of your dome if you have already glued it and you've not put the bolt through. So that's simple and then that just pops in on top. Um, and then, there we go, you have a little tiny astromech. Quick, quick build in 15 minutes. There we go. Um, what I am doing at the moment, just a sneak preview of things that we've got coming up. Uh, I'm doing a small board which will hold a Arduino Nano HM10, which is um, a small uh, Bluetooth module, and um, a DF Player Mini, which is a sound card. So it should have a little, little one about that big that will fit hopefully inside these, um, so you can control these from a mobile phone as opposed to an RC unit. The reason I did that is people have been printing these out for little presents for people at Christmas and whatnot, so you don't necessarily want to go to the expense of a full RC unit to be able to do that when you can actually give them and they'll work off the Bluetooth on the phones. And that's pretty much it, so really simple, very basic remote control setup um, to create every conceivable type of astromech that you could imagine. Uh, I think we've, we've pretty much done all of them apart from R8, um, the poor cousin who I always leave behind because we um, with R8, I don't know, it just doesn't excite me as a, as a build, so I've left him alone. But there we are, a little army of these things, I can't stop printing them because they're so cute. Particularly like this one, look at that, That's, uh, I love the colours on that one, which is the R2 blue, and again painted with the, um, the little pens. Okay, so there we go, armies and armies of baby astromechs or microdroids.